the kit lens, a staple of photography for decades, predating digital interchangeable lens cameras, kit lenses are often a compromise, trading the ultimate in image quality and wide apertures for something that is usually both inexpensive and lightweight. Raymond and I have had some good ones, but also some that left us scratching our heads. For some photographers, the kit lens is their only lens for their camera. For others, it's a stepping stone to greater and more expensive lenses, and some won't touch them at all. <laughs> None of those are wrong. Like everything, it's up to you. If you are new here, hello, my name is Lee. I share videos every week on anything where you might have a camera in your hand because I love photography and I do it every day. <laughs> Subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. I also have a membership option where you gain access to weekly members only videos, eBooks, and my complete courses, along with a special email address where I can get back to you more quickly with any questions or discussions. There's a link in the description if you want to learn more about channel membership. Back to this lens though. We actually didn't intend to have this kit lens at all. Let me explain. We recently purchased this Panasonic S5 L-mount mirrorless camera. Blame that purchase on my partner in crime, Raymond. The camera purchase this time was not my fault. <laughs> we did agree to get rid of one of our other camera bodies, but that's a story for another time. We're thrilled with the S5 and it extends our L-mount collection quite nicely with two L-mount bodies now being the Panasonic S5 and the Leica SL2. I do already have a review of the SL2 and Raymond and I will be reviewing this S5 soon, so I won't talk about this one too much here. When we were purchasing this S5, we noticed a couple of things. For one, you could purchase this Panasonic 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens with the camera for $300 rather than the standalone purchase price of the lens, which is $600. And for the focal length, we had to look twice because we are not accustomed to full frame kit lenses widening out to a 20 millimeter focal length. And this was intriguing. We had not intended to purchase a lens at all with the S5. We have a growing collection of L-mount lenses back there, but notably nothing wider than 24 millimeters. And while we do like a good ultra wide lens like this 14 to 30 millimeter F4 for our Nikon Z system, we haven't been quite ready to commit to an ultra wide 4L mount. Honestly, I'm hoping Sigma will do something in its DGDN line that is ultra wide with an ultra wide aperture for my astrophotography pursuits. <laughs> but the idea of a very small and lightweight kit lens that does widen out to 20 millimeters for an extra $300 with the purchase of the camera was too much for us to pass up. While we didn't set our expectations very high with this lens, one thing we've learned about kit lenses in recent years is that they can actually be quite impressive. So with this one, we were looking forward to finding out. Now, let me tell you how this worked. Raymond, my partner in camera crime, do not let the two of us into a camera shop together, <laughs> made the case for this S5. So when it came time to review the lens, I did inform Raymond that it would be his job to gather much of the content. Never shy about hitting the road, Raymond was up for the challenge and on his way to one of our favorite testing grounds, a place where its sheer size is only exceeded by its beauty. And if you watch this channel regularly, you know where I mean, the Grand Canyon. And Raymond commented that this 20 to 60 millimeter lens alongside our Panasonic 70 to 200 millimeter F4 lens made a great combination. Today's about the 20 to 60, but like much of the other gear we have on those shelves, we did recently show off the 70 to 200 F4 in a video that I will link below. Having 20 millimeter wide angle may be very attractive to you like it was to us, or it may be insignificant <laughs> depending on the type of photography that you enjoy and your style. Raymond did take some comparison shots at 20 millimeters and then at 24 millimeters and then 28 millimeters, which are some of the popular widest angle focal lengths on various kit lenses from the different brands and mounts. If you're a landscape photographer, you will see the difference. If you're more into product or portrait photography, 20 millimeters may not be important to you maybe except for very specific occasions. On the other end of the zoom range, some people might find the long end of 60 millimeters to be limiting, 
which is just shy of portrait length. For us, it's all about knowing what that zoom range is and which of our preferences and photography it suits best. For the Grand Canyon and other outdoor locales, we like our wide angle landscapes and then a separate lens for telephoto for both animal photos, nature, and a different vantage point on landscapes even. One thing that really benefits us on our adventures is portability. Although Raymond didn't hike on this late afternoon at the Grand Canyon, he just drove to a couple of overlooks. We do often bring lighter gear, especially as the hikes grow longer, understanding that our lighter gear may not always have the best image quality or the widest apertures, but on all day hikes, ounces can make a huge difference to your well-being and your enjoyment of the experience, which is usually at least as important as the photos you come home with. The aperture range for this lens is f3.5 to 5.6. Again, it's not competing with expensive zooms or super wide aperture prime lenses. This is the lens to go super wide one moment and then zoom the next moment, all while staying light, quick, and nimble. I'm actually quite glad to see that it's not f6.3 on the long end, which we are seeing more often in kit lenses. f5.6 is usually manageable, even in somewhat dim conditions. And the s5 helps here as well, as it's 24 megapixel sensor in our testing so far does quite well, even when you need to push up the ISO a bit when working at f5.6 and beyond. The lens itself is plastic and lightweight. It has a quality feel though, and tight tolerances. It has nice damped resistance on the zoom and the focusing rings, and get this, it's weather sealed, and it has a fluorine coating on the front element to resist grease and to make it easier to clean. These features are Bit of a surprise on a kit lens. It has a 67 millimeter filter size and a nice hood that clicks into place and is released with a button. That's also a nice touch for a kit lens because many kit lenses and even some more premium lenses have the hood held by pressure, lacking a distinct release button as this one does. Also, the focusing distance, 5.9 inches. That was really unexpected and yeah, we'll take it. For a kit lens, it's one of the nicest we've owned across the systems back there, but here's what it's not. It's not a constant aperture zoom, like our heavier f2.8 mid-range zoom lenses. It's also not nearly as heavy as those lenses. It's not a do-it-all zoom, like a 28 to 300 or anything like that, which makes it smaller and undoubtedly helps with image quality with a simpler design. It does not have optical image stabilization. We'd argue that for the focal length, that's not a deal breaker. And the in-body image stabilization on our Panasonic S5 and the Leica SL2 did completely fine with it. Half press the shutter, wobble the lens around, and you'll immediately see that IBIS is doing its job with this lens. It's designed to be the lens that's with you, ready for many subjects in most, but not all lighting situations, and if you do purchase it with a camera like the Panasonic S5, you get to take advantage of the $300 add-on price, which, as I mentioned previously, is simply too good to pass up, especially if you like to shoot wide angles, but have not quite committed to an ultra-wide lens for the L-mount. As you may have noticed, we have been doing more and more with the L-mount, and we're big fans of the L-mount alliance between Sigma, Leica, and Panasonic, and we love how well gear from those three brands works together seamlessly. One day we can take along our heavier Leica SL2 and it's 24 to 90 millimeter Vario lens. And the next day, the lighter S5 with the kit lens, or we can switch the two and bring some of the other L-mount lenses along for the ride for when circumstances suit them best. The bottom line with the L-mount and the L-mount Alliance is options. We can pick and choose from the three brands, bodies and lenses, to fill our camera bags to suit our needs on any given day. I dig it. <laughs> but what about you? What do you think of this lens? Are you as impressed with kit lenses these days as I am? And if you do have any questions about this lens or various L-mount gear that we have reviewed or even those that we haven't, let me know down in the comments. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.